it's time for the starting lineup for your Texas Rangers. <laughs> Leading off for the Rangers in her second all-star season of the Rangers. Okay, here we go, here we coming go. from the fast-paced world of political consulting, <laughs> manager marketing and advertising for the Texas Rangers, Sarah Stone. season, leading the Rangers marketing department after joining the Rangers from America's team, the Dallas Cowboys, Vice President of Marketing <laughs> for the Texas Rangers, Becky. I know, I just think it's hard to do without him back. <laughs> You guys would be surprised at how hard it is to choose your own walk-up music. It's a really tough decision. I don't know how the ball players do it every day. Um, well, thank you so much for having us. I am Becky Kimbrough. This is Sarah Stone, and we are from the Texas Rangers. And we are excited today to take you through kind of the steps on our Tableau journey. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we started using Tableau, and then kick it over to Sarah, who's going to tell you a little bit about what we're doing in Tableau now. And then we'll touch on kind of where we want to go with Tableau in the future. But before we do that, we're going to do a little audience participation question, see how well you guys know your stuff. Oh my gosh, oh no, so much participation. Um, I saw this hand go up first. So Andrew, where are you from? From uh, Richland, Washington. Very good. And how many regular season baseball games do we play? 162. Bravo, right, Andrew. Andrew has already laid eyes on our chew bobblehead, so we are going to give that to him. Yes, we come bearing gifts. So there are 162 baseball games in a regular season. That's a heck of a lot of baseball games. That means that we play 81 at home, 81 on the road. And from the period of time between about late March to the end of September, um, there's only about 20 days out of the season that we are not playing baseball. So it's a grind, a marathon, not a sprint. And that means that we have to sell tickets to 81 home games, 81. That is double the number of home games that our friends in the NBA and the NHL have to sell, and that is 10 times the number of home games that our friends in the NFL have to sell. Not that they don't work just as hard as we do, but we have a lot of freaking tickets to sell. <laughs> so during the year, those, for those of you who aren't really that familiar with baseball, um, the season is broken up into game series against the same opponent, and those can last anywhere from two to four games. And those series are clumped together into homestands. And the homestands can last anywhere from 2 to 11 days. And if anybody knows people working in baseball, do not talk to your friends on day 11 of an 11-game homestand. Not going to be a real pleasant experience. Um, so the moral of the story is that we have a ton of tickets to sell. Um, and ticketing makes up any MLB club's largest portion of revenue. So what really started our analytics journey and, and our the, kind of the impetus to Tableau was trying to get a better grasp on the factors that we could control that drove ticket sales. So we realized that there were a ton of things that we couldn't control. Weather, team performance for anybody that's following the Texas Rangers this year, it's a tough year. Um, pitching matchup, one of the things that we know drives tickets but that we have zero control over. Um, but then we realized that there's this whole host of factors that we do have control over. Um, specifically, what we'll talk about today are promotions, all of the giveaways, and our advertising schedules. So when we started out on this journey, we asked two questions. Number one, what kind of impact do promotions and giveaways have on attendance? And number two, are we using our advertising and marketing um, resources effectively to drive those ticket sales? So promotions and giveaways. Um, our promotion schedule is basically an incentive to help drive people to buy tickets. And it really gives us a chance to reach out to audiences that we may not otherwise reach out to. This past Saturday is a perfect example. We gave away a R2-D2 Texas Rangers beanie cap. So non-traditional baseball fans, maybe. Um, and it actually had great success. So we divide our promotion schedule into two types. We do the giveaways, which include things like the chew bobblehead, um, any of these swaggy items that you see up here. Basically, if, if we can slap a Rangers logo on it and it's something people will want, we will use it as a giveaway. Um, we do about 20 to 25 giveaways every year. And then promotional events. That includes things like um, 
post-game fireworks shows, which we typically do every Friday, um, pre- or post-game concerts, of, of which we have about three a year, and Dollar Hot Dog Night, which we have been doing every Wednesday night since 1994. I am always shocked at how many hot dogs our fans can put down. It's really, really quite impressive. So the other thing that we have a lot of control over are our marketing resources. So our paid advertising typically focuses on those promotions, those giveaways. And we run ads in TV, radio, outdoor, print, digital. Um, and then we also have our in-game or, or team-owned marketing assets like TV spots in our in-game broadcasts, radio spots in our in-game broadcasts, um, in-game announcements, um, the program, all of those types of outlets that the team owns that we're able to put our messaging out on. So I mentioned that we were traditionally um, using our marketing resources to talk about these promotions and giveaways. And one of the things we wanted to make sure of was that that was the right use of all of these resources. I mean, advertising in the Dallas-Fort Worth market is not cheap. We're the top five most expensive media market in the country. So this was really important to us to try to figure out if we're targeting the right people at the right time with the right message. So Sarah and I got together. We started asking lots of questions. And we realized that Tableau was going to be a really, really good way for us to spot attendance trends. So Sarah had worked with Tableau before. And we literally downloaded the free two-week trial and connected to an Excel spreadsheet. I mean, this was super high tech. This was um, the first dashboard that we created. Yeah, this, this is the magic in all of its glory. Um, and what we were able to do with this was check out different factors um, and see how they impacted attendance. So this was, uh, we started this late in the 2013 season and we had five years worth of data so we could see if there was any change in day of the week, maybe why that was. Um, and this was sort of revolutionary for us because we'd never been able before to see this information so cleanly. I'll never forget the day that we showed this to my former boss um, when we finally put it all together. He called me into his office and he's like, this is amazing. He's like, do you realize the stuff that we can learn from this? And I said, well, yeah. I mean." kind of why we did it. <laughs> and then I said, how about we expand our efforts? So from that original dashboard, um, we dove a little bit deeper. And the next two slides are um, two slides that we showed in an executive committee meeting to showcase some of our findings. And as is no surprise, um, the promotional schedule does indeed increase attendance. Um, games in 2013 with a promotion averaged 40,085 fans. Games without promotions averaged 35,853 fans. And then when you narrow that down into the giveaway versus the other or promo event, um, giveaways are the most popular, averaging 41,564. So then we started asking questions about days of the week. Traditionally, we had put all of our giveaways um, on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And coming off of our 2012 season, we had record attendance at the ballpark. Um, it was the best attendance year on record for the club. So we decided that this was a good time to ask some questions because coming off of that high, it was going to be hard for us to screw anything up. And it was a really good chance for us to learn some things. So we wanted to see what would happen if we pulled some of those giveaways off of the weekend because we suspected that the weekend organically sold really well on its own. And we put them on a day like Tuesday, which was traditionally one of our weaker attendance days. And we found that we were able to grow attendance on Tuesdays 5% from 2012 to 2013, which 2012, being our banner year, um, was a really big deal. So in 2013, Tuesdays were 5% higher in attendance than they were in 2012. So we took these bits of information and got our executive committee really fired up about the possibilities of asking more questions. And we were able to get a couple of server licenses and some desktop licenses. Um, we were able to move off of the free two-week trial. And Sarah's going to talk to you a little bit about what we've been able to do since then. Thank you, Becky. Uh, my name is Sarah Stone. So Becky just talked to you about how we started initially 
using Tableau at the organization. So we went from nothing at all, right, just had some data and some Excel spreadsheets, downloaded the two-week trial, made those slides that you just saw. Those were like the original slides. Somehow we convinced them like, hey, this is a good idea. We should really invest in that. So what I'm going to show you next are some of the ticketing dashboards we, we're currently using live for this season. And I'm going to show some of the non-ticketing dashboards that we're using. But before we move on, some time for some audience participation, because being in baseball, we love these giveaways, right? We wanted to keep in theme. So who here knows or could guess how many tickets total on average an average MLB team sold in 2013? Um, the gentleman in the blue sweater right there. Oh my goodness, Nailed you got it. the question right. You get a prize. Any particular giveaway you have your eye on up here? Oh, uh, we gave away our one bottle. Oh, head. tough. We have a lovely cap. Very good. Yes, so across the 30 teams in 2013, on average, a baseball team um, sold 2.5 million tickets. And that ranges anywhere from the Los Angeles Dodgers, who sold like 3.7 million, to the Tampa Bay Rays, who sold about 1.5 million. So you kind of see the perspective. But on average, teams have 2.5 million tickets to sell, which you can see um, from this visualization is a whole lot more tickets than any other kind of professional sports team has to sell in a season. So for our friends in football, they have huge stadiums with huge capacities that sell out, but they only have eight home games, right? Um, basketball and hockey have 41 home games, which is still a ton, but their stadium capacities are around 17,000. So they have a respectable amount. Um, and then you can see how soccer lines up there too. But in baseball, we're just like out of the world, crazy amount of tickets. So that has been our number one priority right now is tapping into our ticketing database and trying to understand, okay, what are the patterns of sales and how can we as a marketing department really help sell these tickets for all of these 81 home games? All right, so before I move on to um, the dashboards that we've made, I wanted to touch on one of the most exciting aspects of the Texas Rangers whole Tableau story. And it has really been a story of a collaboration between departments. So we're marketing people, we know advertising, we know marketing. Sarah picked the most representative ad marketing yeah. picture so these, that she could these find. These are our generic Twins. stock photos to represent everyone. Um, I don't know anything about IT databases. I don't work in the box office, and I don't work in ticket sales. So what was really exciting was that we found people within the organization who were like kind of tableau advocates in those three departments. So IT, the people who could make a replicated database of our ticketing system. We use a company called ProVenue, or PV, right? So they replicated all of that in real time. They wrote the connections. They got us able to connect to Tableau in the first place. Ticket sales, right, the people responsible for selling season tickets mainly in groups and suites who understand like the ballpark and what all these different fields in the database mean. And then people from the box office, right, the ones who are administering the ticket sales and actually functioning with it. Um, Michelle Knoll from our IT team is actually here at the conference this week as well. She works in IT and she could tell you about what it took to you know, write the code and do the database and all that sort of stuff. I don't really know any of that. I just make dashboards. So it's been really exciting to see how, okay, we started off with those three examples of like, hey, here's our attendance and here's how it kind of associates with promotions and giveaways. But like, this is important and this can apply to bigger things. I think one of the strategies we used was that we got each of these departments to see how their data could really come alive with Tableau. So, um, IT was looking at turnstile data, right, when tickets scan in and scan out, and it was like an Excel sheet, and I went over there and we downloaded a free version of Tableau, we connected to the data, and I showed them like, hey, this is what you can do, you can make it come alive, and we kind of got each department interested, um, and then we kind of formed together now on this team, we have like our own little name and everything, it's a lot of fun, but we get together and we do collaborate and make these dashboards. So, to get to some of the first ones, um, I'll just say that right off the bat, right off the bat, <laughs> Uh, this is all fake data. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. Um, I'm using uh, teams we did not play this year and dates we did not play, and I kind of skewed some of the data. So this is kind of fake stuff we're looking at, but it, it is reflective of what ticketing data we would look at um, and how it kind of works out. So one of the first dashboards we made was this ticket sold actual to budget dashboard, and it shows you exactly what the title is. So we have, you know, 81 home games, right? So at the beginning of the season, or when the schedule comes out, we say, okay, here's our 81 games, and I think 30,000 people will come to this game, and I think 25 people will come to this game. 
And we kind of, you know, plan it out. And we understand that, okay, you know, we really need to like make a regression model and figure out an exact way to predict attendance for the next upcoming year. But for right now, we have like, you know, here's our budget and what are we comparing that to? So the, uh, the, let's see, the dark green circle are the budgeted revenue for a particular game and the budgeted tickets, and then where we are in comparison to that. So this is great because, you know, oh, hey, we have this upcoming homestand against Pittsburgh. Um, where are we at with ticket sales? Okay, we're at 35,000, and we were hoping to get the 36, so we're doing all right. Um, this is great to check as time progresses up to the game. Like, we didn't know how many tickets were sold in marketing and advertising. We wanted to know if our ads were working or what was impacting it. And are so, we placing them at the right time? So this are we is placing really them at helpful. the right time? So um, it shows it by individual tickets sold and then season tickets sold, the grand total, the revenue, um, and it kind of compares it budget to actual. So one thing I want to touch on right now is that in baseball, teams make up like 50 to 70% of all ticket sales are based off of season tickets, right? So those are all sold at the beginning of the season, before the first opening day ever happens. But then during the season, what we're primarily concerned with are these individual ticket sales, right? That's just an individual ticket buyer, maybe it's a big group of people, maybe it's a nightly suite. So what we're obsessed with tracking is this blue line down here, okay? So this is the day of the game, um, and then this is, this is the time leading up to it. And what we found was that the walk-up sale, or the day of the game sale, accounts for about 16% of the total individual ticket sales for any given game, which is like a lot. Dallas is a really late like, walk-up buying market, which drives us crazy, but that's the story. And then we also found that the 10 days leading up to the game, including um, game day, accounts for about 50% of all individual ticket sales. So, Long story short, this dashboard was really instrumental in kind of showing the ticket sales department and executives like, hey, we can monitor this as it's happening. Um, we can get people come to these baseball games. Um, so the next dashboard is ticket sales today, right? So this was made exclusively for the sales department to say, okay, what does our um, sales look like at this moment today for any game, right? Um, you want to make sure that we have a healthy sales going. And this was like a snapshot I think I took around 2 p.m. So it tells you the total number of tickets, the revenue. It breaks it down kind of like by what agency, um, if it's a window sale, if it's internet sale, if it's a sales room. And again, this was stuff that was specifically asked for by the people we were trying to get involved. So what we've been trying to do is like get them on board and be like, hey, this is, a, you know, this is information that's helpful for you and your department. Um, and this has been one that we you know, also check constantly like ah where are we today what do the sales look like it gets more interesting when you break it down by detail so this was that same dashboard and this is the detailed version of it so now it breaks down there's like what 800 tickets sold by that point it breaks it down by what game and then more importantly what buyer type um, and so in this example the group tickets are purple right so the majority of tickets sold for that day um, about 300 of them were group sales. And this is helpful to say, oh, because you might think, we have a ton of tickets sold today. Well, it's probably because a big group was selling and not necessarily our individual tickets were tracking as well as we thought they could. So to be able to connect to what our ticketing system identifies tickets as and to show it on a dashboard has been extremely helpful for us. The next example here, and this is the last ticketing dashboard I'm going to show you is a special ticket promotions dashboard. Okay, so during the year, you know, we have lots of different ticket promotions we give. Like, we have a soda partner, so it's like bring a can of the soda to the ballpark and get, you know, 15% off your ticket or whatever. Um, well, like, how many tickets have we sold for this promotion so far? Who knows? You know, we don't know. So we connected to the data, we wrote the connection, um, and this updates every 15 minutes. All these dashboards update every 15 minutes. And for the soda partnership, we'd so far this season, we've sold about 7,000 tickets. So just to be able to say, hey, database, tell me what tickets were sold, this particular ticket type, show me the timeline, show me what seating sections they were sold at, so I know where and how people were buying it. It has just opened up the doors for us to understand how these ticket promotions have happened. We have an interesting little example to show you, Becky's gonna talk about. Um, but we had a game, let's say it was on Father's Day this year, um, that was not selling well because it was a Sunday, it was a holiday, and it wasn't selling well. So we came up with this special promotion. Yeah, oftentimes when games aren't selling well, and we know that from all of these dashboards that we've created, if we know we're about to fall really short of our goal, 
we'll get together and we'll discuss how to move some of that distressed inventory. And on this particular Father's Day example, um, it was the last game of a really long homestand, which is traditionally a little bit harder to sell. It was kind of a special holiday, which can sometimes be difficult to sell. So four or five days before the game, we all got together and we said, what can we do to move these tickets? And we decided to do a really deep discount, which we don't like to do, but we will do maybe two or three times a year to help move some of the tickets that seem like they're distressed. So we launched this particular ticket special um, four days before the game, and then we were able to see in real time what the performance of the special was. So we knew exactly what day we had in-game broadcast assets running. We knew exactly what day we had earned media running. We knew exactly what day we were promoting this on social media. So we were able to see exactly when those activities happened, what the result was. So this has allowed us to put together kind of a template for launching these short-term ticket specials. And that really is one of the more valuable things of all of our efforts. Um, these dashboards are really nice, but what do, you, what, what do you do with them? What kind of decisions can you make off of this? So I think that's a really good example of us making better decisions in the future um, with the data. Right, and we never would have even um, come up with this dashboard if it weren't for this like Father's Day ticket special where we're like, gee, I wonder if like all this all these assets we're throwing at it is making a difference in sales. And we said, hey, IT, could you write code that only brings in the ticket sold for the special? And it kind of turned out to this thing that we rely on a lot right and now. And the box office is really excited because they don't get emails from me every 15 minutes going, how many tickets have we sold? OK. So that was the final ticketing dashboard I'm going to show you. Next, I want to show you two different examples of how people in the organization have said, hey, what about this other data that I have? Can you put it? into a dashboard and help me make a point or convince someone of something. So Michelle Knoll in our IT department had all of our cell phone expense data, right? Like any company, we have like hundreds of employees and with all these cell phone expenses. So she just downloaded an Excel file. We put it together in Tableau. So right off the bat, you know, here's the monthly cost, whatever. Right off the bat, you can tell that, hmm, international scouting, they're Average, you know, by department, like they're way above everyone else. No surprise there, but it's, it's kind of ridiculous, you know, we're trying to cut costs. We should also mention that this is still fake data. Yeah. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Yeah, there's some good names in here, though. <laughs> okay, so we're like, okay, well, international scouting, that makes sense. What does this look like by month? Um, okay, here's the department, here are the different people. Wow, this Barrett Kensington, man, what is he doing? Um, this is crazy. And oh, then pro scouting over here, this. Amos Holston person is out of control. This just brought the cell phone data to life for our accounting department, and this made a huge difference in the way they understood things. Um, and I also wanted to point out that, I mean, you can kind of scroll along and see who, who the outliers were. But you'll notice here that in the major league team, like, so this is, you know, front office, GMs, all those sorts of people, all of a sudden in August, like, their monthly expense goes way up. And this was cool because we didn't realize it until we saw it visualized. That's because the team was in Toronto playing the Blue Jays. All the staff flew up Toronto. There's your international you know, expenses or whatever, and that's why it went up. But that's not something we even thought about to explain away why their costs went up that month until we saw it in this particular visualization. And then finally, this is the one that they just loved. Um, again, taking the individual average monthly cell phones and looking at it by person and coloring it de by department. So, Bolt House, Weatherton, Quentin Bradley, Ezra James, what are you doing? Well, you're probably in the DR somewhere, in some baseball field, making deals. And that's what their job is. But at least now we understand how it fits into the grand scheme of everything else. And now we can kind of formulate a plan. Okay, let's reduce these cell phone costs. This is out of control. Um, it's no surprise that. International scouting, and then what's this? Pro scouting, John Johnson's in the Dominican, this person, oh, mailing admin, I wonder why that is. You know, so it was extremely helpful for us. Okay, oh, then this is my last example. So this was kind of a fun one as it loads here. So we were in one of our analytics ops meetings, and we were thinking about Dallas, and we're thinking about our ticket sales and our competition in the market. And, let's see, it's not, my map's not loading. Let's see if it does there. Um, we said, well, how many tickets are really available in any given sports market, right? We know that if there's a baseball team in one of these 30 markets, or I guess it's less than that because there's two baseball teams in a couple markets, but that market's going to be like overwhelmingly flooded with tickets. So do the markets with baseball teams have a, like a lower attendance rate, or do they still sell tickets? Who's oversaturated and undersaturated? We have map issues. 
I apologize for my map issues. Um, but this was a fun one that we looked at. So we just took the U.S. Census population from 2013, looked at the total tickets theoretically available in a market. So we took all the professional sports teams, you know, went on to ESPN.com, look at how many tickets each team sold, and said, look at their capacity, and was like, okay. So in Seattle, we would call you a little over-indexed here with all the tickets theoretically available. We threw in some household income information. But if you look at least the Sounders and the Seahawks, their attendance rates were really great in 2013. The Mariners, on the other hand, eh. They're doing okay. They're doing okay. They're our friends. They're um, be brethren. They're doing all right. But it was great to be able to say, okay, well, let me look at any other city. Um, we'll look, take St. Louis, for example. They way over-index on their tickets, right? I mean, they've got the Cardinals, the Blues, and the Rams. There's only 2.8 million people there, but they have all these tickets. But their attendance is out of control, so we could say that they're you know, like rabid fans or something. But anyway, and then there's a little map right there that's not working. But anyways, again, this was just an example of how getting out of just like the whole ticking arena, how Tableau has been really useful to the Texas Rangers to look at different business problems and business situations and help address them. Um, we've also done fun things like tap into pitch effects data, right? I'm not in baseball operations, but I still download pitch effects and like look at you Darsh's throwing records to see you know, where there's a strike zone is and all that sort of stuff. So the point is that We've kind of discovered, and, and, and we're trying to help people understand, there's a lot of broad uses for Tableau in the organization. Um, ticket sales has been our main um, kind of focus thus far. So what's next? Well, the big thing we re really want to do, and we know a lot of other sports teams have done, is to create an interactive ballpark map, right? So we just haven't scratched the surface. I'll mention that we haven't been using Tableau even for a year yet. So we know that all of this stuff is like extremely preliminary. We have all these big dreams and plans for what we want to do. But building an interactive ballpark map is one of the top things on our list. We want to be able to drill down within each specific seating scale, um, so each color here on the seating map, and see what's sold, if it's sold on a season plan, if it's sold on a group plan, if it's sold on an individual level. And then historically over time, are they moving? Are they not moving? Is this oversaturated with season tickets? Is it oversaturated with groups maybe? Or is it not moving at all? Do we need to reconsider what the pricing model looks like in that particular seating scale? So an interactive ballpark map is going to be a really good way to visualize some of our... And we know that other sports teams have done this, so this is something that we're kind of trying to like, oh, help us out here. The Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> honestly, they're our inspiration for this they're one. Our they have a really great interactive seating it's map. It's beautiful. Um, second thing we want to do in the future, we you know, you know we're babies at this, um, ballpark operations. So another huge thing when you think about baseball is the whole ballpark experience and everything that goes along with that, right? So you come into the ballpark, there's concessions data we need to get a hold of and dump into Tableau on a dashboard. There's parking data. That's a huge revenue stream for us as well that we want to get in there. Um, we have created a few box office like ticket counter dashboards, you know, which windows are the most active and like what kinds of people are redeeming their tickets or buying their tickets at windows, trying to understand that. Earlier I mentioned turnstile, which is like gate scan data. Um, you know, the master plan is to connect all this to a dashboard that also has like a live box score that has the weather so that during a game or while people are entering the ballpark, you could say, okay, it's 6.30, you know, we're 35 minutes from first pitch, there's 15,000 people in the ballpark, this is what traffic looks like, this is what the weather looks like, and this is how we know how many tickets are sold, 60% of them have been walk-up sales. And New Darvish is pitching tonight, so we hope to get more. Um, and then finally, the last point is that we want to integrate with R. So I mentioned earlier regression modeling. You know, we have those 81 games. We can try to predict them out in advance and plan based on factors. We've been working with SMU and their business school, and we've had some brilliant interns come in and help us build these things. Because again, I'm not a math person. I don't know these things, but we're working with people who do. So we'd like to learn how to integrate with R and kind of get our regression models put in there. So before we wrap up and more audience participation, does anyone know which Rangers pitcher was the first to reach 500 strikeouts faster than any other pitcher ever? I saw this hand go up first. Very good. Yay! Bravo. You get a fuzzy bear. So just to close this out for you guys, we're going to show you some of what we actually do in marketing um, and show you a TV commercial because who doesn't love watching TV?
This is you. Opposing scouting reports resemble advanced calculus. Three fastballs, two curves, a slider, a cutter, and a box marked other. Worldly. So many pitches, his catcher practically grew extra fingers. Their piece has a trophy case. You has a museum. His first 500 strikeouts, faster than any pitcher ever. Now that is real Texas heat. Simply said, you is pretty great. Join you and the Rangers at Globe Life Park. Purchase tickets at TexasRangers.com. So who's got questions for us? In the back, yes. Yes, it's a little preliminary at this point, but we do have some of that stuff integrated. What we're working on perfecting, though, is the impact of advertising on ticket sales as a little bit more quantifiable. I mean, we can visualize it now, and we have all of those tools to be able to actually see it. But Sarah mentioned regression modeling. What we'd like to do is know the exact impact of the advertising on ticket sales. And honestly, since we just got started with all of this, it helped me more. So I got there in 2013, right, mid-season. And so when I was planning our 2014 media buy, I had Tableau and I was looking at ticket sales and like home stands and how they're structured and when individual ticket sales happened. And I placed my 2014 buy based off of that. So once the 2014 season ends, which has been a rough season, um, hopefully we'll start marrying those two things together more. I mean, that's the holy grail that we're really going yeah. after. We don't have it solved yet. Yes. So our baseball ops department does also have Tableau. They've got their own separate licenses. They use the software. Um, we're not really privy to how they use that, and that's probably a good thing. Um, but our ultimate goal, like Sarah mentioned, so you take the sabermetric for war, wins above replacement, and that basically looks at all these different factors of a player and how they perform in certain scenarios. And that's exactly what we want to do with our attendance. We want to be able to model our attendance on factors we know we can control, factors we know we can't control, and tweak the things so we know that we're placing the advertising on the optimal days, we know we're placing our performance or promotions on the optimal days, and really get the, the best bang for our buck for advertising. But we love Sabermetrics. We're very excited about Michael Lewis. Nerds. We're carrying around our copies Total of Moneyballs to get signed while he's here. So <laughs> it's in the spirit of all of that. Yeah, I'm going to let Sarah answer that because that's something that we've been working on. We kind of get big picture data from MLB of all 30 teams, right? And so, you know, I'll build a few histograms of like, okay, here's what the advertising spend for each team looks like and compare that to market population or what the expense is in each market. Um, and as far as attendance, we did one study where we looked at all 30 teams for like the past, like from 1900 till present, right? And we were looking at what sort of impacts the postseason has in general on attendance. And it, I mean, this is kind of what we thought beforehand, but it kind of turned out to be like, if, okay, if you go to the postseason, you have about three years of in, increased attendance, and then it starts to drop off. So we'll, we'll kind of like, I'll go to baseballreference.com, and I'll pull that sort of stuff and look at it. Um, but it's just kind of very, you know, top line sort of stuff. Shocking, though, winning helps you sell tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Rocket science right there. <laughs> yeah. So there's a really good question. We have played around a little bit with Node XL and looking at some of the sentiment analysis, um, but we have not yet really connected a lot of that stuff into Tableau. There's a um, session on that we're going to try to attend. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, but that's that's another thing that's on our radar. Absolutely. Yes. Ooh, really Ooh, good question. Hot topic right for the here. sports industry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes and no. So the secondary market is a beast with many legs, um, and that beast runs all over the place. Um, we actually, Major League Baseball has a relationship with StubHub. Um, we created StubHub. We can thank ourselves for creating this many-legged monster, but um, we can look at some StubHub data. We cannot really um, look at the entire secondary market on our own. We work with some vendors who have um, that capability, 
but that's another thing that is really high on our list. And that's another thing that in the seating map we'd like to see. So if there's a ton of tickets in one specific section that are going on the secondary market, what can we learn from that? Yeah, that's a really good question too. So we work with a company called Turnkey and they do demographic appends for us and we can go back and look and kind of siphon and split the data um, and look at specific demographic groups, see what kind of patterns we can learn there. That's another sort of holy grail, if you will, um, really painting the picture of each ticket buyer um, and trying to figure out what drives them, what the likelihood is that they're going to buy again, what the likelihood is that we can move them up the scale into being maybe buying a six pack at first and then a 10 pack and then a 20 game and then or what the risk is that they're not going to renew yes so it, it's been really cool working with the sales department you know they use crm they keep touch points of like who, who's bought different ticket packages over time and if they're moving up or not but yeah yeah yes That's right, and the single, the, so those people, the single game buyers who maybe buy one or two games in a season, those are our prime targets. We want to get those people in the door to buy a six pack, which is um, a pair of tickets to three games. So if you came to two, come to another one. And then the thought is once we get those people in the door, we can send them up the escalator and convert them into longer term season tickets. And one of the big challenges we face with individual ticket buyers is that, so 16% of them are buying on the day of the game, right? And then almost probably like a third or a half of those are actually just walking up to the window and purchasing the ticket. We have no information on them whatsoever. They pay with cash. Who so pays it's like, with oh. cash? <laughs> so that's a, a nut we have yet to crack. Yeah. One more? We have not, but that's an interesting thought. Hey, stop talking about us. We're right here. <laughs> Salt we the can wounds. hear you. <laughs> no. That's a really interesting thought, yeah. Um, that's definitely something that we should think about doing. Jot that one down. Yeah. Uh, question over there. A great question. So Ticketmaster is not something that we deal with because we're Tickets.com team. Sarah mentioned ProVenue, which is actually their soft, software platform. Um, external partners like GovX, um, they actually run all of their ticketing specials through our website. So we're able to capture all of the information from those third-party guys. And kind of the soda specials that we talked about, all of that stuff is run through TexasRangers.com so we can capture that data. In the back. That sounds dangerous. Um, so that's kind of a tricky question. I think that's a wonderful idea. So to put the power in the customer's hands, to let them look at some of the in-game data, let them slice and dice the pitch effects. Um, we have an entity called Major League Baseball Advanced Media. And in conjunction with BAM, we develop all of our mobile apps, all of our websites, all of our digital facing um, customer um, applications and that would be something that we would work with BAM on but yeah we're always looking for different ways to engage fans and bring them on board and specifically younger audiences you know if we can find a way to teach kids math with baseball then we've already done a good thing by you know regenerating the fan base with younger and younger fans yes, yes. Um, this is actually the first year that we're 100 percent dynamically priced in the whole ballpark and for people who aren't familiar with the idea, dynamic pricing is basically airline industry. It's, it's priced by um, supply and demand. So each game, um, we have a third party partner um, called QQ out of Austin, and they help us with our dynamic pricing. And we'll go in and evaluate their recommendations and decide whether or not to raise or lower prices based on um, all the factors that they look at. Um, that's kind of a two-part answer, and, and yes and yes. The, the first part is that, yes, um, overall, the increase in attendance is worth it to get those folks in the ballpark. Um, 
Also because, as I mentioned, a lot of times the giveaways target people who wouldn't necessarily come to the ballpark. So if we can get those um, non-traditional fans in, then we're doing ourselves a great favor and the hope is that we move them up the scale. Um, the second part of that is that most of our giveaways are sponsored. So a lot of times we'll work with our sponsors and have them cover the cost of some of our giveaways. But one kind of thing that goes along with that is that people were questioning dollar hot dog night, right? Which is every Wednesday, right? So like, oh my gosh, are we like losing so much money? Well, we looked at it and the incremental like ticket revenue versus like what we made on the hot dogs at night, it works out that it's better to still have dollar hot dog night and get people in the door. So that's something we looked at. Yeah, you can't just come and eat a hot dog. You've got to eat a hot dog, drink park. a beer, get some, so get some nachos, park your car. Yeah. So the, what we call per cap data or per cap revenue information um, was a little lower on Wednesdays, but it was offset by all the other activities that those fans were doing in the park. In the back. I'm sorry, can you speak up a little bit? Uh, yeah, back to your customer issues. Have you thought about surveying your customers? Yes. Uh, especially the ones that pay with cash? Yes. Um, we do send out quite a few surveys. We actually send out a survey after every single time someone buys a ticket. They get a survey from us within two to three days. And then at the end of the season, and at certain points throughout the season, we'll send out surveys to different um, customer groups, whether it be season ticket holders, suite holders, individual buyers, group buyers. We're asking people all kinds of questions all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, we have roof envy of our friends across the street, sometimes in August. I was supposed to put up a slide here about like session feedback too, I can't find it. Just so you know, uh, I think on your Tableau app, they want you to fill out feedback for sessions, so there's How are we that. doing on time? We can end early. we got 15 minutes. Any other questions? Any other questions? I can, yeah, you want to bring it up? Yeah, I mean, sometimes a dog is a dog. Sometimes a dog game is a dog game, and there's not a lot you can do with it to make it um, an outstanding game. The thing that we, I keep, we keep going back to the regression model, the thing that we want to know is, are we sure that that's a dog game? Are we sure that we're not going to be able to do anything to lift attendance on that? And, you know, we're not always going to, we're not really going to give up on a game, but we would... <laughs> You know, if it's uh, an opponent that doesn't draw very well in the middle of the week under, in a really long homestand, we would talk about that opponent less in our marketing and advertising assets than we do the surrounding games. I mean, the Marlins, the, the Marlins have a really good team this year. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's an interesting question, and. There's so many variables throughout the year um, that it's tough to answer is interleague play good or bad for attendance right off the bat because it really is so team specific. Um, we have the Dodgers on our schedule next season. We know that those guys are going to draw big. We also have the Giants on our schedule. We know those guys are going to draw big. Um, we had Philly on opening day this year for the opening set. So it's tough to say without considering all of the other factors. I mean, opening day that's going right. to sell out no matter I could go out on the field and pitch and we would still sell out so that's it's a tough thing to say yes or no yeah no doubt um, and we know we're going to have interleague games so yeah. there's not just a ton that we'll do question in the back Ouch. <laughs> um, we've done research on where our fan base comes from, for sure. Um, interestingly, we draw fairly equally from both Dallas and Fort Worth, but when you start to divide that out and to look at and see what each person from each city is buying, um, no surprise, most of the full and half season ticket packages are from the 75201 zip code, which is the central business district. So it's a product that corporations buy and use for entertainment purposes. Um, and then some of the smaller plans are more of the individual buyer, um, and those kind of are s siphoned out throughout the rest of the Metroplex. Um, but as far as moving the stadium, that's definitely something that we're not ready to talk about just yet. 
it's above our pay grade. 20 years. We've been there 20 years. We have been there 20 years. This is our 20th anniversary. Yes. Definitely. Um, some of our giveaways are just for kids, so and oftentimes we do those on a Sunday. Um, and overall, as a club, we index, um, we have a younger fan base than league overall, so we're doing a good job trying to get younger folks into the ballpark, trying to engage them with the game. Um, but I think a lot of that does go back to our digital um, platforms and how we're engaging with the younger fans on a digital level. So that's something that we definitely think about, um, and it is something that we're, I occasionally lose sleep over. Yes. Yes. Do you just analyze competition within the market itself? You know, if there's concerts or, you know, the Dallas Cowboys game, how that affects attendance and all that? Yeah, definitely. Um, that slide, oh. So the question is, do we analyze uh, competition within the market? So are we looking at concerts, Cowboys games, Mavs games, Stars games? Back to school in the fall, football starts up in the fall. The answer is absolutely yes. Yeah. Um, we, Sarah mentioned the SMU interns that we have um, on board this year, and we've given them a list of things that we want to explore and, and look at adding into our modeling. Um, overall, though, I think the, the biggest thing that we've done related to your question is the dashboard that Sarah showed with the market attendance um, and ticket saturation. Um, that's been kind of an eye-opening thing for us. Anything else you want to add on that one? That's good. Any other questions? The way back there? Yeah, it's pretty much what you would expect. Um, and this is where weather really comes into play. Um, so the numbers that any baseball team is reporting is typically tickets sold, not necessarily turnstile in the park. Um, and for us, it's really, really hot in Texas in, in August and September. So we have a tougher time getting people through the turnstiles. But you know, it gives us a chance to look back and say, what can we do from a marketing perspective that's going to entice people to come into the park? So a couple Sundays ago, we ran, um, we mentioned it was our 20th anniversary in our ballpark. We ran a 1994 ticket special where tickets were priced at 94 levels. Um, draft beer was priced at 94 levels. Hot dogs, um, $3 nachos. $3.50 beer. Yeah, 350 beer. 350. beer. So, you Not know. quite 10 cent beer night, but... <laughs> Um, we look at ways that we can combat that and then see what we can learn from it and apply that to future games. But it, it's, it's cool, though, to see, like, on a night where we have promotions and giveaways, we yes. have, like, a turn style dashboard. So you can see, like, on those nights, people are getting there super early, and you'll see the dark of the gate, like, people in and out at that time. So it's, that has allowed us to track it a lot more closely. Mm -hmm. There's a really good question, and this is, I think, where we need a little bit more advanced modeling um, to answer that fully. But yes, we discuss it when we're looking at the schedule and deciding where to place the promotions. We just don't have a precise answer on if we are cannibalizing, how bad is it? Is it worth still putting the promotion on that specific date because the cannibalization will be made up? I mean, it's, it's just a really tough question to answer at this point. Yes. <laughs> so you talked about wanting to do this and we're looking at that. Do you feel organizationally that you guys have been able to do all that? Or are you going to reach out to somebody that has that done for you? So that's another good question. Um, we've, Sarah mentioned that we've been using Tableau for less than a year. Right, and, and we feel like we're at a pretty good spot for a company that has adopted this software product for less than a year. And we're very fortunate in that we've gotten really good adoption rates. Um, we've been able to show these dashboards, get executive buy-in, get departmental buy-in, mm -hmm. and um, really get kind of the key people behind this initiative. Um, as far as moving forward, there's definitely um, kind of a sketched out plan in place that we would like to see happen. Um, and it's just a matter of getting the resources committed to making that happen. And thankfully, Tableau has been super helpful. Yes. All of our reps, we make them come down there and come to games and help us out. <laughs> yes, that's been fun.
Shocking, I know. A great question and one that is again probably slightly above our pay grade. Yeah. Um, the baseball ops side of things is one that is for a nerd like me and Sarah is really fascinating. Um, however, not really our expertise. We like to play with pitch effects data and pretend like we know what <laughs> what what specific saber metrics our baseball ops guys um, should be looking at. But overall, that's really a conversation that takes place between baseball ops and ownership and finance. Um, I believe one of them is here, Cleveland. Hey. Cleveland in the house. There they are. <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, there are a few other major league teams um, who are taking, I think we all take different approach to analytics. Um, we, we've started out, this is kind of how we're getting executive buy-in. There are other major league teams who started out with executive buy-in, so they started out really building their own analytics departments, I think. Um, and we're kind of trying to make the case for one for ourselves. Um, and then there are other teams who are just kind of getting started in, in the area, um, similar to how we were about a little less than a year ago. Yes. Um, there was a lot of Excel. I don't know that I would call it analytics, but Sarah and I were making big, huge spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, I mean, since I, I've been with the Rangers for three seasons, this is my third season, and since I walked in and I realized that most of what we do in the marketing department is drive individual ticket sales. I mean, we, we assist with selling season tickets, um, but the majority of our advertising and marketing outlays of spending is to drive individual ticket sales. So. That's been something that I've been tracking on my own for a really long time, so it's nice that we now have the resources um, and the buy-in to do it as an organization. On the business side, really the adoption of Tableau has kind of been the beginning mm -hmm. of our business analytics. Yes. For our dashboards, um, a little bit. Are we using mobile for our dashboards? Mm -hmm. Nah, not. Not much, um, but I was really excited to see what they're about to roll out from a mobile perspective, and we will be using it more um, once we can get those capabilities. Thank you so much for yeah, having us. Yeah, thanks, you guys. This has been so much fun. Feel free to come up and get these giveaways. <laughs>